So unless you've been living under a rock, everybody watching this channel knows that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have purchased a new home for $14.7 million in Montecito, California. The estate was formerly owned by the McCormick family, McCormick Spices, I think, who purchased it in 1896, built a large two-story Mission Revival home on the premises. The name came from an oak tree which had grown out of and split a large boulder. Riven Rock split the boulder. The estate was the site of the confinement of Stanley McCormick, the youngest child of Cyrus Hall McCormick, that's a cool name, Cyrus, and Nancy Fowler McCormick, who suffered from schizophrenia for much of his life. Okay, and his story is the subject of a novel, 1998 novel called Riven Rock. The main house was demolished after the 1925 Santa Barbara earthquake. So that, the demolished house is still there, okay? Uh, and the history is still there. And so we wanna look at this. And as we all know, there are many, many corollaries between Meghan and Harry and Wallace Simpson and Edward, okay? And so now they've moved into this historied property. And I'm wondering if these spiritual correlations will occur because some very interesting things happen there. In August 2020, it's reported that Meghan and Harry of the British royal family had purchased the mansion Chateau of Riven Rock uh, following their decision to step back. Okay, uh, from Russian oligarch Sergei Grishin, and we're gonna look at him too, because he's interesting. And all of this spiritual stuff, I'm wondering, the locale, this is the book, written in 1998. The locale of most of the story is Riven Rock, an estate located near, it's in Montecito, Santa Barbara County, California, owned by the McCormick family. Stanley, having developed severe mental problems, is confined to the estate for the rest of his life, during which repeated attempts to cure him by various medical experts are to no avail. avail. So literally, his wife moved him out of Chicago, the McCormicks are from Chicago, and she took him to as far as away as she could get, which is this tiny little place, Montecito, California. And I'm sure it's a lot smaller then than it is even now, okay? Oprah wasn't living there, Ellen wasn't living there. So that's really the middle of nowhere, just really out in the middle of nowhere. Stanley and Catherine, husband and wife, live largely separate lives. The reader comes to know Catherine slightly better, if only because she's a functioning member of society, albeit sexually deprived. Whereas Stanley is either catatonic or in a violent rage for much of the time. He's been diagnosed as suffering from dementia pre precox, among other conditions, his deepest fears and hatreds reserved for women. That's so interesting. It's basically, it's saying that he hates women. Dementia precox is a dis disused, okay, it's not used anymore, psychiatric diagnosis that originally designated a chronic deteriorating psychotic disorder character characterized by rapid cognitive disintegration, usually beginning in the late teens or early adulthood. Over the years, the term dementia precox was gradually replaced. Okay, so it's like Alzheimer's. All right. So Catherine keeps him completely celibate. They have a completely celibate relationship. She seeks to uh, seize control over all of his money because he's very rich, but they don't have sex. He's locked away in this very far place. The three parts of the novel parallel those times during which three different psychiatrists preside over Stanley's care. So Stanley is declared ill, okay? And his wife is declared well, and she controls everything, she has everything, she's active in society, and she just keeps him in prison there. The first caretaker is Dr. Hamilton, someone more interested in studying the apes and monkeys he's brought to the estate than in helping Stanley to improve. The second is Dr. Brush, something of a non-entity who gives up any prospect of saving the patient. The third is Dr. Kemp, a psychoanalyst who achieves some success in bringing Stanley around to be able to interact with women including after nearly 20 years, his wife, Catherine. In the end though, the patient reverts to abnormal behavior and Catherine sues unsuccessfully in court to obtain full control over Stanley's care. Okay, to obtain full control means she would have obtained full control over the money. Okay, wow, wow, wow. 
I'm wondering if there are correlations here, and we're going to take a look. The guy who sold uh, this property to Meghan and Harry is, the scarf is Sergey. This guy, Sergey, whatever, Sergey something. Uh, and I'll read it. He's a Russian oligarch. So here's the headline. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's 17 million California mansion was owned by Russian oligarch who threatened to chop X up. Okay, so he's under this saying his ex said that he threatened her. Here's Sergey, tit for tat, posting on social media, she beat me up. So she says he's threatening to chop me up. He posts on social media, she beat me up. And look at this. This is the online, quote, proof. Here he is with, you know, looking better, his normal appearance. Here's the Scarface mansion. That's pretty cool. And here's Scarface. Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Time for a spot of royalty. Is, is the history of Ribbon Rock going to repeat itself with Meghan and Harry? Uh, it's really kind of interesting that they bought this property. Uh, and, you know, that's that Sergey guy with his craziness, uh, you know, that's also really quite negative. Um, it's a it's a house and an estate with some negative history, and maybe that's why uh, the price was cut from twenty five million to fifteen million because nobody wants that history, uh, and the spirits of all that are still there. So let's take a look. Will the Ribbon Rock history repeat itself with Meghan and Harry? And basically, uh, McCormick's wife, Stanley's wife, got all the money, controlled everything, and he was just basically locked away at this mansion you know they fed him and they had psychiatrists will it repeat all right so sun sun reveals all ruler and four leaf clover very active as opportunity presents itself, ruler, 13 and 5, 18, 5 diamonds on an ongoing basis. Sun, sun, all, everything, uh, you know, sun is a success card and everything heals in the sun. Hmm. Everything grows, everything heals in the sun. Behind is no, full stop. Above is a good solid cornerstone. In the future, we have Hamster Wheel, The Long Journey, Scourge, Conflict, and Mercury, 12 and 10, Six Diamonds, All the People. So a long trip overseas or the long journey, conflicting and moving forward. I think it's mostly in the past. Okay, I think it's mostly in the past. The, the sun would heal it. You know, each person is responsible for their own actions as they occur. Okay, so it, it, they're hoping for a solid cornerstone here. And so I don't think the spiritual ramifications are too bad for them. Let's just check some other things. Let's look at Meghan and Harry. Is Meghan Markle trying to push Harry into a mental health crisis? Because in order for these things to repeat, Harry would have to undergo a mental health crisis. And as, as you probably recall, Harry was working with Oprah. One of the first things they did is Harry started working with Oprah. You know, and he's always talking about Diana and all his... Uh, you know, his PTSD kind of things with Diana and her death. And that's what really started coming out of his mouth as soon as Megan, as soon as he married Megan. And, and this Oprah special has never come out. And I said, wow, what a terrible mistake if he comes out and makes all these admissions of mental illness and drug addiction and drug use and blah, blah, blah. He'll never be able to take that back. Uh, big, big problem. So... Let's just, you know, following along this line, is Megan uh, trying to push Harry into a mental health crisis? Let's look at Megan and Harry. Megan. Those are interesting cards. Harry. Oh, dear. Ooh. 
well, 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 aren't these interesting cards? Um, manifesting, yes, she's manifesting a breakage. 24, six spades. Uh, six spades would definitely be, a, it's, it's all the sixes are relationships. Six spades is the incubus, succubus. Six spades could be a negative relationship with himself. Harry into a negative relationship with himself. A break and a negative relationship with himself. So six spades is also a card of drug addiction, and that's a form of mental illness, definitely. Relying on drugs, uh, depending on that uh, thing to medic, you know, self-medication, definitely. I think drug addicts are actually very, very ill, uh, and I don't, I don't take any drugs. Uh, and people get mad at me because I say this, but I don't take anything. I don't even take aspirin. I mean, I don't take anything, no drugs. And the reason for that is because I had cancer and they loaded me up on drugs. Okay, so I'm done for life with drugs. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Now, when I'm 90 and I actually have a medical issue, will I take a prescription? I don't know, maybe, maybe. We'll just have to wait until I'm 90. Uh, so, yeah. So right here, she is manifesting a break and mental illness. That's so weird. And we have the yes card, which emphasizes everything. What about Harry? Overwhelmingly, very emotional. This innocent man is very... The, the King of Hearts man is a good man. There's various king energies. Okay, and this is the good man. And the Queen of Hearts is a good woman. Uh, no ulterior motives, just la-di-da, you know, faithful partner... Uh, just innocent, okay, a good man. That's all this card represents. Uh, and it's, you know, and the, the other kings are different energy. They're male energy, but they're different. We have two tens, which are complete completion. This adds 33, nine hearts, nine hearts. So she's got him in an overwrought emotional state. So uh, she's really managed to put him in just an overwrought state uh, and that's the key so she is really manipulating him she's isolated him completely she's gotten him away from all of his his advisor who was with him for 25 years why would you get rid of this advisor who has shepherded you through your entire life including wearing the nazi uniform the naked billiards diana's death how could you get rid of somebody like that? Did somebody hit you in the head with a sledgehammer? How could this happen? You know, she's really got him right where she wants him. And he's in an overwrought state. And I'm a little surprised to see the cards read this way. Because I kind of didn't really expect it. Uh, so she has him in a very overwrought state. She's got him right where she wants him. If she's, and she's manipulating him. Uh, and she's she's breaking him down. And up here we have Earthquake and Three Blackbirds, 14, Four Hearts, Family. Uh, the whole family situation is just a disaster. Really, really a disaster. Uh, now for someone who's going to, you know, if someone is, uh, has uh, BPD, what is that? Well, that's bipolar. But if somebody has... Um, borderline personality or is a narcissist all of this really works in their favor all this chaos and they're in control and no matter what happens they're using it against you she's just got harry completely overwrought and and in many other readings i've seen him just following along under her thumb what do we have here mother earth so this can be mother or the situation very complicated, 38 diamonds, everything, everything in their marriage is just such a mess and very, very, very complicated and it's a disaster. So surprisingly, I would say that Megan is absolutely uh, controlling Harry by keeping him just really off balance, really cut off from any kind of help and just emotional really 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 emotional because she's someone who is constantly playing the emotions and she would do this by playing the victim you know oh help me uh interesting so it's interesting how she's controlling harry 
We're Megan and Harry drawn to this property spiritually because of the history. Okay, because, you know, like attracts like. Okay, and, and when I just did a reading on Harry and Megan, I wanted to see, you know, people are, are imperfect. And they join together because their imperfections match or complement each other. And I expected to see very deep hurts and psychological issues that were connecting for Megan and Harry. And that's what would draw them together. I didn't actually see that. I saw Megan, you know, more wearing a mask and manipulating him. So I'm, and that's not good because if their deep psychological hurts really connected properly, then it's viable marriage because that's what we're here to do on the earth is to, to grow and develop, which maybe that's why life is so hard. Okay, so did they, did they connect with this property spiritually? Are they drawn to this property sort of, un, you know, spiritually and unconsciously? It's just kind of kismet. Let's take a look. Ooh, there's the devil. That's an interesting question. Were they drawn spiritually, you know, kind of, you know, unconsciously? There's a, there's a deep heart connection here. Everything is working together with the deep heart connection. Six and three, nine. They love it because they really do connect with this property and what's the, the dead things in the box, the history. You know, coffin is dead things in the box. Uh, the, the history that's gone and past, it's already dead, but it's still there. So definitely they really connect and hearts are the most spiritual Hearts are the hearts are the very spiritual energy. Hearts are the most spiritual energy in the deck. Uh, the other very negative spiritual energy is spades, and here's the devil. Okay, so yes, they do. They definitely felt a spiritual connection to the history, definitely. But devil, hand in hand, scapegoat. It's a negative. Uh, and maybe they weren't aware of this. It's a negative uh, spiritual connection. 19 and 6, 25, 7 hearts. Yeah, this is kind of like their karma. So devil cast out all the people and 7 hearts. Yeah, they, they are very connected spiritually to this property and it kind of drew them. Like you... you you're looking for a home. I would like to buy a home. Hopefully I'll buy one soon. And I'm hoping the market drops uh, because of all of this COVID thing. Um, so, and, and people look at houses, they go into houses, they say, oh yeah, this is the one. You, they just knew, you know, they tell you, oh, I just knew. The moment I walked in, the moment I, there was a smell, uh, you know, just the, the way the floorboards felt, uh, I saw that wall and that I just knew. I, I looked off the balcony and I just knew. I had a dream about it. I just knew. It was kind of like that. They have a real connection. So Sergei was accused of saying he would chop up his ex-wife. And then he went ahead and posted that thing and, you know, that bloody head and said, oh, he, she beat me up. I, I actually don't believe either one of them. Uh, nevertheless, will Harry be accused of domestic violence because we're looking at the correlations. Okay, that's something the last owner was accused of. He was accused, and I think he was accused in that house. Okay, so will Harry be accused of assaulting Megan, you know, domestically? Because there's not a violent bone in Harry's body. That doesn't matter. I mean, he's a guy, so you can accuse him. And Harry, and, and, you know, Megan could be Amber Heard, you know, and you've got tape recordings and videotapes and, and a dozen witnesses of her, you know, violently assaulting people. And everybody's like, yeah, but she's a woman. I mean, come on. Okay. Will Harry be accused of domestic violence? So roses, fence sitter, two spades. No, no. I don't see that happening. No. I don't see that happen. This is very positive on top. What's underneath? So that's what's on the surface. What's underneath? Uh, 12 and 7. 19. 5 clubs. So we have changes. 
underneath. Two fives changes. The woman is committed to her path forward and exploring all of her options. Okay, so divorce is definitely not off the table. Uh, definitely not off the table. And I've said in a previous video, I would bet that they're going to divorce. And I, I'm going to stick to that. Uh, I believe they are going to divorce, absolutely. The only question is, when? Uh, because it's a deeply unhappy relationship, and I don't think they're really well matched, unfortunately. Uh, and leaving the royal family, oh my goodness, how can you make a worse decision? Uh, and I don't care what they, anybody says about it, that's a terrible decision, and that's not going to play out well, and it's not playing out well. So she is looking at all her options. She's very, de she's very determined. She's, she, you know, she believes she's a feminist. And, you know, even though she gets all her money from men and all of her advancement in life so far is from men, she believes she's a feminist and she's very determined to move forward in life. And that's what she's doing. So she is working all her options. She's always taking care of Megan. She's always advancing herself. And she's going to do whatever she needs to do to advance herself. That's underneath. She's very committed to this. The woman is very committed to moving forward in life. But I don't see any kind of domestic violence, anything, with Harry and Meghan. It would be ridiculous. I would hope that people would be very upset about something like that. But I don't know. We live in a crazy world today. So let's review. Will Raven Rock history repeat itself? This shows healing. Okay, this shows healing and step by step and a firm foundation. Behind, we have these problems. In the future, we do have their own journey, their own journey of conflict. So no, the, the spiritual stuff that is there that maybe dropped the price from 25 to 15 million is not, it's, you know, they're not going to be stuck with, Harry and Meghan are not going to be stuck with the sins of the past, you know, coming to bite them at this property. I don't see that. They're, that's kind of been cleared out from the area. And it's, I don't know, maybe, I mean, it could be that they actually did a, a cleansing, you know, an official cleansing, because there's various ways you can do a cleansing. You could even call in, you know, a shaman or, or better, you can call in like a real exorcist, you know, and just remove whatever spirits are there on the property. Uh, there's various ways to do that. So Megan and Harry, is Megan actually trying to push Harry into a mental health crisis? Because he's been in a mental health crisis literally from the minute he married Megan. Harry's talking like he's in a mental health crisis. Well, Harry is completely overwrought. He's in a constant situation where he is just completely emotionally overwrought. Okay, and Megan is doing this to him on purpose. She's playing the Diana card. She's reminding him of his mother's death. She's just constantly doing this. And the home environment is just a disaster. Their interactions, three blackbirds and four hearts, their interactions at home are a disaster. And hopefully Harry is flying out, you know, flying out all the time, escaping, you know, in his private jets and then, you know, virtue signaling just to get away from that because, but, and at least he can do that. You know, he has crazy amounts of money to do that. Uh, and it's just very complicated at home, and it's just a disaster between them. So that should indicate that they'll split up, but not necessarily. All right, did Meghan and Harry, were they spiritually drawn to this property? Absolutely, and it's very negative spiritual drawing. They, they are. They're kind of karmically drawn to this property, just like how did they end up at Frogmore, Wallace, and Wallace Simpson and Edwards, that's where they're buried. And we all looked at that and we're like, oh, scratching our heads thinking, that's so weird. They're just like Wallace and Edward and now they're living at Frogmore. This is the same kind of thing. It's the same thing. It's almost, it's like you can't make this stuff up. It's crazy. Okay, so Sergei Grishin was accused of assaulting, of saying that he would chop up his girlfriend, and then he posted online that his girlfriend had assaulted him in his bloody head. Will Harry be accused of assaulting Meghan? No. 
No, she, she's going to play all her options to advance herself, but that's not one of the things that she's playing. And maybe just because people would be so upset about that, because it's kind of ridiculous. It's ridiculous to accuse Harry of that. It's like accusing uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean guy. You know, and everybody says he's such a sweetheart and a darling, and, and never was a violent ever. And then this, this crazy person, Amber Heard, comes along who just assaults everyone, and now, now Johnny Depp is just this, 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 you know, it's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And yet it works. It, it works. It, and he's suing her for what, $50 million? I hope he wins. That's how I see it. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. Find the book worldwide on Amazon. In Kindle and paperback versions, find the full color card deck used here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Many thanks to the generous folks who bought me a cup of tea. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe.